you're from the dark ages of the 80s and 90s, you might remember a thing called VHS. Going down to your local blockbuster to get the latest titles that were coming out that summer or Friday night, you know, good movie night. Um, in New Zealand we uh, didn't have blockbuster, we had a Video Easy and another chain called United Video, but the same thing really. And then the 2000s rolled around and a little thing called DVD uh, Video started coming out. So who remembers that? Like director's notes, behind the scenes footage, trailers and more. Watch a movie right on your computer. <laughs> and rent or buy DVDs from these great Hollywood studios. DVD. See how good a movie at home can be. With over 3,000 titles to choose. If you go back to 40 seconds within the video, uh, you'll see a laptop that's advertised um, playing a DVD. And this was, you know, 1998 that we're talking about here. Um, it took a good few years, but I actually managed to track down uh, one of those laptops. It's uh, Toshiba's first sort of um, laptop equipped with a DVD-ROM drive and we are talking the Toshiba Tekra uh, 780 DVD. I have two machines here and that's for a very good reason that we'll get into later. The very first uh, machine released by Toshiba with a DVD-ROM drive was the 750 DVD which is basically equipped with a 233 MHz uh, Pentium 1. The 780 series was the first with the new Pentium 2, 266 megahertz. There's a few bits and pieces basically bundled in to make this all work, but um, it was a very, very expensive machine, and I had to double check these uh, sort of inflation calculators. But you know, this is ten thousand uh, dollars that we're talking. But the 750 here is um, yeah, really just with the 233 megahertz. Uh, same machine really, just different processor, uh, I think it even used the same graphics chipset by the looks of the specs down below there. I have two units here, um, and that's for, um, one's a parts donor and uh, one's an actual um, DVD model. The unit on the right is the one I originally got like three years ago, maybe even four, and it took a long time to try and find a complete model that works so on the left is actually a CDM and the only difference really is the DVD ROM drive according to the specifications so the machine on the left is going to make a good uh, like candidate and then um, the one on the right we're going to basically pillage all the parts out of it because this thing is haggard it is abused the plastics are cracked the screw bosses are all falling apart the screens cracked but what it does have is a hard drive, a caddy, the DVD-ROM drive itself, and some memory. And um, yeah, it always makes good for um, spares and plastics and things like that as well, so it's always good to have kicking around. So you can see here, screen's cracked, probably a bit hard to see, but in the middle bottom of the unit there, there's the model number that we will be uh, looking at. And yeah, you can have a look around the front of it, it's a uh, pretty rough shape. So yeah, here's my uh, donor unit, it is as I said a 780 CDM, they are effectively the same machine, it's still got the MPEG encoder built in which is you know required to actually play uh, DVDs um, and video for that matter, but yeah, it's got a few cracks here and there, it's an old machine that's you know to be expected, uh, it's just the way these plastics go, but yeah, PS2 on the back, yes, video, RCA out, We've got the standard parallel port, infrared just above the power port, serial VGA, and a little mechanism on the left side there to extract the CD-ROM drive. Inside of the machine was a standard, um, what do you call it, Etherlink 3 card, We've got two USB 1.0 ports, which is quite nice and the floppy disk drive port, so pretty standard stuff for a machine around this era. I robbed the hard drive out of the uh, DVD model just to see um, if this donor machine actually works properly, um, because you never know, it got shipped all the way from America to New Zealand, so I'm actually surprised that it survived the trip, but yeah. Here we go here, you can see eventually when it gets fired up here, 
that we actually have a post screen which is great because these machines are so hard to find now After waiting a uh, few minutes for the post screen to disappear, it became very clear that the hard drive needed formatting and the OS needed reinstalling. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to that, but we're going to get straight into the uh, what I'm going to call the build of the machine. And the first job is to remove the leaky CMOS batteries. So if you've got a Toshiba around this era, definitely get in there remove those CMOS batteries because they will already be leaking if not already destroying your motherboard uh, it's a very common problem these laptops are actually very reliable um, but they often get taken out by the battery corrosion from those CMOS batteries I believe this sort of era might actually be the last few that sort of use it uh, they did use it for a few generations after that but yeah the plan is basically get rid of the batteries Put a few parts and donor parts from the um, DVD model um, and yeah give it a test put an OS on it and um, see what's what so yeah we're gonna crack in get it split apart remove the batteries This is the uh, sort of damage that you want to avoid. You can see the acid is already sort of wicking down the wires. And there's two of them. The smaller one is for the clock. The bigger one is for the memory for standby. Both of them uh, need to go. So definitely get rid of those batteries. Because these ones were already leaking. And sometimes they leave the connector or the wires in the motherboard. Because of the corrosion gets so bad on them sometimes.
One of the uh, parts robbed from the donor machine is an extra 64 megabytes of memory. There is some on board, I believe, as well. So we're going to have about 192 megabytes of memory, which apparently to the spec sheet is the maximum that uh, this machine supports. So uh, with Windows 95 installed on there, it's uh, going to be well more than this machine needs. I probably shouldn't even bother to fit this, to be honest, because yeah as you'll see later on doesn't make any sense uh those clips were horrible to push down as well the um yeah the memory slots <laughs> i don't think they've had memory ever in them uh but yeah, the little mechanism here you release the um lock tab and then you push on this little lever and it um forces the cd-rom or optical drive out you get a good look at that baby she's a plain old toshiba CD-ROM drive from 1998, May of 1998. And given Toshiba make a lot of the optical uh, stuff for DVD back in the day, I think they went in with a number of partners like Philips and things like that. They made their own DVD-ROM drive. And then again, this is from uh, 1998 as well, January. So period correct parts. As I said, these are actually the same machine, same exact spec, just uh, missing the dvd rom drive obviously so you could option uh, bigger hard drives i think this might have may have had a bigger hard drive but yeah found the little fee as well but these things are nice and sturdy probably break off as soon as you press your uh, wrist on there thought i'd have a good look into the hard drive that came out of the donor machine as well because uh, i was just curious to see what model it was the caddy that uh, surrounds this is really painful to remove. They enclosed it in this complicated thing. So yeah, you got this plastic cover that has to come off, which is attached to the ribbon at the front. You have to be very careful. And then of course there's more screws and things like that to actually get a good look at the hard drive. This ain't this girl's first radio. This hard drive's been out before being replaced. So yeah, she's no spring chicken, but um, it seems to, um, we'll do a test later, but I believe it all checked out, was kosher, so yeah, working ID hard drives at this day and age are uh, getting a bit thin on the ground. Most units uh, came equipped with an 8 gigabyte hard drive, this one's only 4, so yeah, this has definitely come from another donor unit. Uh, but to be honest, as you'll see soon, uh, that's not going to matter too much because, yeah, the graphics chipset this thing's equipped with is, um, well, it's a bit of a dog's egg, so yeah. A good hunt around online on archive.org yielded the recovery media, which I was really happy about. Uh, just because it's got all the DVD software and things like that that normally get bundled in. Um, so I'll link it in the description and stuff, but um, yeah, I think what we'll need to do is do a memory test and a hard drive test uh, just to make sure those parts are good before committing to an OS. Um, the software of choice is um, Spinrite which I've got here, um, and that just goes through, checks the hard drive, gives it a good thorough testing as well, and gives you uh, some pretty accurate information as well, like, you know, how many read, retries, re-reads, things like that, so even if there's no bad sectors, um, you know, you get some pretty good insights on the drive, which you can see coming up here. With the dodgy old second-hand parts we had robbed from the uh, disgusting, crusty old donor machine, um, they all checked out fine when you need to install an operating system. I went with some um, nice dodgy recovery software from archive.org, which happens to be for the 780 DVD. It has all the bloatware and everything packed into it, which is exactly what I'm after. Um, these recovery medias are rather annoying, like most of them from this era to, well, until the Vista days, I think, or even Windows 7. They love to do split partitioning. 
which really winds me up, especially uh, the C drive here is being formatted to FAT16, which means you are limited to two gigabytes. And then the rest of the drive is left dead with FAT32, so, you know, you're giving up a good, oh god, like 60% of the hard drive just there because of a FAT16 partition. I still don't understand why they do that, because, you know, if you lose your hard drive, everything on those two partitions is gone anyway, and then if you do the recovery media because you think everything's protected on a second partition, uh, it's going to be reformatted anyway so as i said something i still to this day don't understand why that was ever a good idea maybe for disk defragging speed that's probably the only reason i can think of but then again that's a pretty crap excuse so shame on you oems there's my rant over and done with right there um but yeah after another half hour of farting around finally got some drivers and things loading um once again windows 95 uh, living up to the name of being a hard ass and um i had to still manually specify driver locations things like that especially for the uh display uh, of course being oem uh, media is filled with lovely bloatware and applications and things like that that you might open up once and then you know forget about so the max time manager is pretty standard for toshiba laptops with the vintage it's basically just a power monitor for the built-in battery which happens to be dead so yeah that doesn't charge up at all i'm just using it to weigh the laptop down so it doesn't move around i think it might have a foot on one side so that's pretty much all it's useful for but yeah having a quick poke around the um the cd-rom that I burned with the recovery media, had the display drivers going before long enough. Nice and blurry when you do a split screen on Toshiba's, it's like their party piece, gives you a nice little bit of blur. But uh, yeah, all checks out, apart from uh, a modem, which we'll ignore. But yeah, everything else sort of checking out there and looking pretty good. So I thought it'd be a good time to add some of my own crap and bloatware to the machine because that's exactly what it needs. So I installed Office for Windows 95 and then I loaded it with even more stuff that I had found off uh, my retro NAS. So definitely check that video out. It came in handy to pull in more junk um, and things like that, drivers, applications and some games. But yeah, she's no uh, speed demon here. That old hard drive is definitely a bit sluggish to get going, but hey, at least it still works. Having another quick poke around now that I've got the uh, display actually working, so you know, you get the um, higher resolution. I still don't understand why they give you two DVD modes here. Perhaps the MPEG encoder that's provided by S3 can't pull uh, the skin off a custard, and that's why you get two options, I guess, maybe to sacrifice some frame rates. Got some lovely Toshiba wallpapers and a screensaver which didn't work, so that was um, great use of time there to save that baby. Um, I would have liked to have seen what it was, but yeah, as I said, it just didn't do anything. Didn't open. And uh, yeah, the Toshiba wallpapers really just got the Windows 95 cloud background with a nice Toshiba um, logo sort of stamped in the middle there standard affair of software we've got the opl3 control set which happens to be a fantastic uh, sound chip for dos gaming covered that in the past before because i'm a toshiba laptop hoarder and uh, the usual mouse stuff as well so this is a bit fancy it's got a few extra buttons and things like that you can have a poke around in there uh, DirectX is my go-to tool, um, DX Diag because I'm too lazy to load anything else, but we've got the full beans of the 266 megahertz, which is powered off the B440MX, whatever it is, B440 chipset, um, Intel chipset happens to be very good got the weak source s3 verge mx uh, this chipset they chose to put it on the pci bus so they could have done extra few ponies of power out of it if they put it on the agp bus but they didn't do that i believe only the compact and Marta at the time did, did such things as that um, had issues of course with half-life and OpenGL support it seems like this graphics chipset is just really 
doesn't have great OpenGL support, so I thought I'd give uh, Direct3D a try, but given this is the original release of Half-Life, uh, the textures didn't work properly, which happens like half the time I try Direct3D mode. Also, the frame rate was terrible, so yeah, that was, that was great. However, because this is a Pentium 2, the software support actually was pretty playable. I mean, I know this is at a low resolution, it's like 320 by something or other that I can't remember because my brain is uh, soup. Um, but yeah, it seemed to work pretty good. I'd say that's playable. I mean, I would have played it back in the day like this, so yeah. Once again, Pentium 2 power saving the day with that chipset and maybe a bit of the extra memory as well. GL Quake there, not working because of the S3 Verge. Um, yeah, as I said, this is a terrible graphics chipset. It's pretty much just good enough for DVD playback, and that's actually what it was uh, fitted for. But software rendering, once again, on the Pentium 2 shining through to help bring the steaming turret up to some playable uh, old school gaming. Well, with the gaming stuff sort of covered off, it's pretty much going to be all software rendering, I'm afraid, for this graphics chipset. I thought what I'd do is let's go out and actually uh, do what this laptop's designed to do, and that's uh, multimedia. The only problem was it was raining by the time I filmed this. Uh, so yeah, I dug out this beast. It's a uh, Sony Handycam of some description. I've had it, oh gosh, like 17, 15 years something ridiculous like that believe it or not it's um this is actually the original disc that i bought for it because the discs used to be like 50 new zealand dollars uh for a double-sided long quote-unquote sort of playback series so i went out recorded a video burned it to a dvd because the dvd rom drive would not read the smaller disc and yeah, we're going to take a look and watch uh, Windows Only 5 actually do some DVD playback, which I think is pretty a neat little party trick. And I think it's all down to that MPEG encoder because, yeah, I think Pentium 2 plus that paired. Uh, it's actually not too bad. I was, I was very surprised. So yeah, anyway, guys, um, what we'll do is we'll crack into the settings, um, sit back, relax, and enjoy my lovely home video. Well, yep.
there's something just so strange about watching Windows 95, you know, this is an ancient operating system playback DVD, I guess it was pretty groundbreaking technology back in the day, but yeah, really cool, and you can multitask and still do work and things like that, so, you know, the only other DVD I've got, which is a commercial one, which I can't show, is actually a, a live Bee Gees concert, I think it was the last night only one, one night only is the name of the title, anyway but yeah still works a treat so yeah here's my own uh, footage well uh, the only other thing left to do is to scrape off all the bogeys and things like that that came shipped from murica from the middle machine so you know a bit of windex mr muscle whatever you want to call it glass cleaner seems to do a pretty good job of getting all the grunge out of the shell these plastics love to retain grime i think it's due to the porous sort of texture of it so yeah, a bit of cleaning and things like that just to round it, um, got most of that off, a bit of elbow grease, I think I had to use a bit of a magic eraser as well for more of the tough marks and things like that, but yeah, other than that, not too bad. Overall, the machine's are actually in pretty nice condition there, nice bit of LCD cleaner, get rid of the grime off the display, but looks pretty good at home on a table, desk, things like that in an office, but it was really cool actually experiencing after waiting, you know, a good few years to track down another unit, um, the DVD experience on Windows 95. Alrighty everyone, enjoy your holiday season, and I'll catch you guys in the new year. Bye for now.